Good evening, YouTubers. The sun's gone down, so at last I can come out. Although I have been feeling quite tired today, I've had a long sleep today. I might go to bed early, but um, I'll spend some time with you on the back deck. I think you're doing really, really well. You're very, very strong. There, there is some healthy person. There actually. is something I haven't done before on this on this um, channel. I haven't uh, burst into song and sung a song for everybody. And uh, trust me, nothing's going to change tonight. <laughs> or in the future. I've never heard you sing. And no? yet you were a choir boy. I was. Name, a, name that hymn. Name that hymn. <laughs> I'll I'll name remember that show. <laughs> oh. So, yes, we had, we had Jason down yesterday. That was lovely. Fantastic guy. Fantastic. What an interesting guy. Yeah, yeah. We were sitting oh, on the back deck having no drinks no idea. With us. No idea how uh, what the things he's done in his life. He's an incredible person, but I won't say because uh, he, he likes to keep yeah. a low profile. He doesn't want his face on his channel and uh, channel yeah. and stuff. Yeah. He, he wants to remain private, which is yeah. great. Yeah, he does a lot of work behind the scenes. He does for he does. veterans yeah. a lot, a lot, and, a lot. Uh, yeah. It's amazing what him and Trevor uh, do. It really is behind the scenes. Anyway, so um, we've been talking a lot about the submarine um, accident, uh, incident. Yes. And being seafarers ourselves, personally I wouldn't want to comment on what's happened. I know on the face of things it seems dead obvious. It was a really inefficient tube, it was a really stupid idea, it's a tragedy. But I don't know the ins and outs just yet, and I don't think anybody else does. So. No. Well, from what from what we know so far of the story, it, it, when it lost contact, it probably imploded and just I sank had, to the bottom. I mean, uh, that's that's who knows. That's I had wondered that actually. So it had a yeah, it had a failure. But I I know for a fact that the carbon fibre is really, really, really strong. And this is cutting edge there. Don't forget the Wright brothers didn't have any... Graham, I don't think that submarine um, was cutting edge by any... Certificate of airworthiness they before they took to the skies, anyway, did they? Well, we're... we're um, we don't know all the details of it. Yeah. Although it appears everybody does, but we don't. And I'm sure things will come to light. But what we do know about is, uh, being as being commercial seafarers... I'm just going to grab a Guinness. Oh, right, carry okay. on, I'll be back in a sec. What we do know about is that we all have to, as commercial passenger vessels, have safety equipment, which is to a standard called Safety of Life at Sea. The acronym for that is SOLAS. And SOLAS was created as a result of the original Titanic tragedy. Um, SOLAS was an international convention and it is a law um, because Titanic didn't have sufficient lifeboats and the, the, the life jackets and the standard and that they wanted to avoid something like that happening again so they created this thing called SOLAS. So everything on our dolphin boat it has got this stamp on it and it's unacceptable without the stamp and what we have is a little steering wheel stamped on it. It's called the MED steering wheel and that means it is SOLAS approved. Now that's all according to international maritime law but that does not necessarily mean that our, the life jackets on any commercial vessel or goldfin are actually any good. In fact in my opinion they're bloody awful all the instructors we have on the STCW courses, they are bloody awful. Um, would you ever wear a Solas life jacket? If you had the choice between a buoyancy jacket and Solas, which would no, you I'd choose? wear the civvy ones. Really. I'd wear the civvy ones. They're, they're way better. Anyone with any common sense who wants a chance of survival, you wouldn't touch a Solas yeah. one. But bureaucracy says Got Solas, the Solas. And the Solas life jacket, I'm guessing here, was de um, is a basic design that goes back to what 1912 or 1920 or something like that and because le marine legislation won't allow so these life jackets they're huge anyone who saw our sea survival oh. it's a great big orange horrible, horrible. cube when you jump in the water firstly it will most likely break your neck 
Secondly, you have to hold it so it doesn't break your neck or your nose, hopefully. Then you have to hold your nose so you've no way of doing this normal starfish to slow down your entry into the water. They're appalling. It depends how high the boat is you're jumping into the water. You're on Titanic, mate. You're on Titanic. Would you jump quite, 60 foot off the Titanic in a soul ass life jacket or would you go for the buoyancy like me? Plus you get sucked down, don't you, by the wreckage. You don't just sit on it My until point it goes is under. You that get sucked down. Yes, health and safety is very important and it's very easy to be critical and go, umbrella of safety, 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 safety. They must but, save your lives, those life jackets. I mean, they're really uncool, but they've got to be safe for an unconscious person, haven't they? No. If I was unconscious, I have to be fully aware and conscious and I have to actively work to keep my head in it the whole time I'm doing the sea survival. And the sea survival, I'm only in the water for about four hours. If I were in a real life situation, yeah. absolutely no bloody way would I wear one of those Solas life jackets. Well, we don't carry civvy life jackets, do we, for us? No, we're not allowed. Because you can wear the, the inflatable ones if you wanted to. Because all those civvy life jackets are way superior on the whole. They, the marine legislation hasn't caught up with the fact. Marine legislation is still back in the 1920s. There's another a big irritation I've got, and that is the life raft on Goldfin. The life raft on Goldfin, again, is SOLAS approved with the MED wheel. Now, when I first started at Safari and you were there... I think it's a 30 man, isn't it? It is a 30 man. We have to have 10% additional yeah, to yeah. passengers and crew. When we first started there, Tim had uh, an, what was what is known as an open, reversible life raft. I'll let you explain. It's like a floating paddling pool, circular paddling pool. So you throw it in the water, it inflates. It doesn't matter which way up it is, the floor will move either side. You get well, me? Equal so measure. all you've got to do is jump into the, the paddling yeah. pool and it floats, it just, it's just there on the surface floating. Gigantic big circular thing, so yeah. you launch it. But that's unsuitable for the <coughs> North Sea, for example. It would require you to have a roof and a hatch so that you can open and close it. And well, I, dis I disagree with that. the weather I mean, out, you know. I mean, on our passenger boat, we have 25 passengers maximum and three crew. So we're looking at 28 people potentially needing the life raft. Of those people, the three crew, perfectly capable. Potentially, maybe 20, 25, 50% of the passengers. Perfectly able-bodied, fit enough to uh, cope. Now, the law said we had to get rid of the open reversible and have what is known as a SOLAS approved life raft, SOLAS as in the Titanic. SOLAS life raft basically means it's got a roof. And not only, that sounds like a good idea, but firstly we do the sea survival. I don't know about you, but I fainted once because everyone was hyperventilating and the oxygen ran out really fast. Yeah, I mean it replenishes yeah, itself, yeah, yeah. but I passed out. Imagine being in a small tent with 30 people, you know, Going that would get hot in there. I mean, you're not going to run out of oxygen, obviously, but you, you're going to get low on oxygen. I have. I, yeah, very low. sure. And uh, people have died. People have been sat on people. And, and also, just... not only that, because it's got the roof as an entrance this, this big, like that. Now, imagine someone who's got very limited mobility, someone who's larger built, a mother with children, and they've got to climb a ladder made like a pair of tights. I mean, you put your feet in them, they go straight under the life raft. There's no resistance. It's very difficult to get in it. You've got the waves Especially moving as well. Life jacket on. Big stupid life jacket, get which won't, that, be all right. won't fit through the door. So now, as a crew, I'm confronted with potentially 25 passengers, may not speak English. We go very short range. We've got to deploy the life raft. I, instead of the open reversible, where I can just put the life jacket on them and throw them into it like a paddling pool. You're in, you're in, you're in. Now, I've got to throw them in the water, and then once I've got all 25 of them in the water, I've then got to jump in the water and try and manhandle them through a little itty bitty hole on a Solas approved life raft. And I hate that life raft. We, I mean, did, we did a, a sea survival course video this year. In yeah, in we February, did. I think. Yeah. If you look back to both mine and that. You could put a link in the description yeah, to it so they can see. Remember. But don't forget all the people on that course. 
are seafarers. They are not passengers who've not necessarily ever been on a you boat can't before. Swim or nothing, yeah. Yeah, the open reverse rules were always a much better idea. But and the legislation makes no account for climate. We're in a very warm climate here. They've made this rule yeah. based on an accident that happened in the North Sea on a big ship yeah, with a crew yeah. of about it six. Should be, it should be judged on a case-for-case -case basis because we, we don't operate more than three miles away from Gibraltar, so we're in Gibraltar territorial waters at all times. We're not likely to go to the Atlantic Ocean. The thing with the accident that created the legislation, like a knee-jerk legislation, was called the Love It. There were six crew, it was the North Sea, they abandoned ship on an open reversible, and a couple of them, I think, froze to death. One of them got caught in the... The ones with the roof are definitely warmer, where the... Yeah. Where there's Ironically, worse. the Love It itself never actually sank, which is a common thing. People abandon ship far too quickly. So, there's all this umbrella of safety, umbrella of safety, and people say, oh, you need a roof, but unless you are a seafarer and you know the realities, and I personally, I'm, thank God we've never had that sort of situation where we'd have to deploy the life raft. I dread the thought of hurling people who may not be able to swim, can't speak English, may have mobility issues, could be overweight, maybe have children, could yeah. be pregnant, could be disabled, could be di diabetic. I've got to throw them in the water, let them get really cold until I've got everyone in the water, then I've got to get in the water. There'd be a big scram to get them through a hole like that. So I really disapprove of a lot of the legislation that goes back to 1912, was it, when Titanic sank? I think it was, yeah. So yeah. we're probably looking at legislation that began in 1913. Over realistically. Years old. And marine legislation doesn't really seem to catch up with what the hell's going on today. That's just my experience as, as 13 years working as a seafarer with passengers. And the life raft has to be taken in and unpacked and inspected every year. And then they put it all back together, check all the flares are in date. Which in itself will weaken the glue and on all the cells. That costs a thousand euros a year. Thousand euros on Tim's. And in 14 years, I've never seen it once. Never, hope, they don't want to see it ever. And our dolphin boat is uh, 40 foot long. But it's got to work when you need it. Um, and we carry 25 passengers. So we're looking at a scenario of 28 people going in. The two yellow boats, one of them is uh, one meter shorter than us, but carries 50 passengers. And the other is two meters longer than us and carries 70 passengers and they have the same number of crew they've got four life rafts and they, but they've got four life rafts so then they've got to throw 70 people into the water and between three crew they've got to manhandle them through little they've into, got a, into two, same, into two and the little one that their little boat that's shorter than ours they've got to throw 49 passengers in the water plus three crew and fit them through that I mean I don't know I, honest to God I don't know how they control 119 passengers with six crew when we, we would struggle with 25 passengers yeah, yeah. and three crew um, and with exactly the same and they're wearing these horrible Solas life jackets that are death traps they're death traps one of the big things when we do the sea survival course the instructor always says what you're about to wear is a death trap you've got to hold it there so it doesn't come up break your nose, give you a bloody nose as you enter the water, or break your neck. I mean, this is serious. This is, these are the current standards of Solas. So Solas is a big pet hate of mine. Solas is not as safe as you think when it you, is. When you see those big fancy ocean liners on the sea with thousands of passengers on board. They see, have Solas. You see rows of life rafts, but what you don't see is they've got hundreds of those little plastic Rubber, rubber rafts that inflate, hundreds of them. Because they're more realistic. Because you never get everyone into the life boats. No. Uh, anyway, I think that's... The principle of Solas is a good idea, but the problem oh, yeah, is yeah, 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 it's, they've it's... just not evolved. Uh, and now well, I see a lot of these experts going on the news criticising quite rightly about the submarine as things appear at the moment on the face of it. But... Yeah. These experts support the idea of the house brick Solas life jacket, which, trust me, is a death trap. If you ever go to sea on a cruise, take a little buoyancy jacket. That's my advice. 
They're dead small, they're dead safe, they were tested on a dummy. You've got a coat, haven't you, with a life jacket built in? Yeah, but I never wear, I would never wear that. I'd rather, just rather have the little waistcoat. Yeah. They threw a dummy in the water a hundred times and it came upright, with the head above the water every single time. Better than the Solas. I hate the Solas life jackets. So the principle is good, but things are not always that safe at sea, unless people are switched on, like us. Sea's a very dangerous place. Can be. Good night, and may your God go with you.